Welcome to Secrets for an Inspirational Life with Mimi Novik, the place where every heart tells its story. Whether it's inspiration, courage or hope you need, you've come to the right place. Sit back and enjoy the journey with us. Subscribe below to be sure you don't miss future episodes. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Secrets for an Inspirational Life. How are you all today? I hope that there is some beautiful moments that are occurring in your life and that there are some exciting and adventurous times. I always say that one's life is like a book. Everything has its chapters. Sometimes in the depths of our heart, we can possibly recognize the people that we are meeting along this journey. We feel sometimes that we have met them before. And I do believe that we have in another realm, for sure. And we always recognize people that are similar to our own frequency and the way that our soul resonates with theirs. And that's something that we should not be afraid of. Definitely, let us not be afraid to grab every opportunity that life bestows upon us because it is so fleeting and yet so wonderful. Amongst everything that happens, we have a gift and we should be grateful and we must be grateful. And I say that to myself as well. Mimi, be more grateful because when we are grateful, we really can truly see a glimpse of heaven. Now, I'm super delighted to welcome my guest today, who is the very lovely Patty Slowly. Patty is a food writer, broadcaster, and speaker. She appears regularly on TV shows, and her work has been featured in well known food magazines and publications. Patty is a chef on a mission to introduce the world to the glorious and exciting African food that she was taught to cook by her mum growing up in Ghana. Described by Executive Traveller magazine as Ghana's best kept secret, Patty is inspiring and exuberant with a zest for life. Hers is food from and for the soul. In a short series for ITV's Lorraine show titled Patty's Taste of Christmas, she delighted viewers with some of her favourite festive dishes. She has also featured on John and Lisa's Weekend Kitchen. With features in several well known magazines, Patty is a regular on the BBC Three Counties Radio where she shares food tips and recipes with regular listeners with her passion for food. As a resident chef at the well-known and prestigious Jean-Christophe Novelli Academy, she runs courses on African fusion called A Taste of Africa. She has written two cookbooks, A Plate in the Sun and Date with Plantain, all available on Amazon. Today, she shares her wonderful journey. Welcome, dear Patty. Oh, my goodness, Mimi. Thank you for having me. I, can you say all this again? I listen. Can you, I want to <laughs> <laughs> this is all for you, Patty. What a gorgeous introduction. Thank you so, so much. <laughs> and this is my first podcast. I am so thrilled to be on here with you. Oh, and you I, I'm about, even more thrilled. You know, you talk about being grateful. I, I got up the other day and I, I was reading uh -huh. something about being grateful, I think from Oprah Winfrey, about being grateful in that. And I got up uh -huh. and I was bouncing around the house. I was standing in the kitchen. I thought, Patty, you've got a pulse. You're alive. Yes. You've got to be grateful. You've got yes. to be thankful. And it's something my mother banged on about as well. So I'm happy to be alive and I'm happy to be talking to you. Oh, well, I'm absolutely grateful. I'm grateful that you are here and that you are going to spend some moments with yeah. me and my guests in the world, because really, Patty, your energy, I have to say to the listeners out there, 
what a fantastic lady. She has the most remarkable energy that I was so excited now for days to have her coming on. I was telling people and people were saying to me and friends of mine were saying, all right, calm down. I said, no, why should I calm down? This is exciting. I know. Exciting. <laughs> oh, my goodness me. Oh, Patty, and production. you're such you. an inspiration, really. What a wonderful job that you do. And um, let's begin somewhere of this wonderful journey that you embarked upon uh-huh. of being the chef, of coming here from Ghana and all your beautiful moments. Let's start at the beginning. Tell us a little bit about how all of this incredible life of yours started. Okay. I'll take you a little bit back to when I was a child. Mm -hmm. I grew up in in Ghana in a place called Takaradi, right along the beautiful Atlantic, Atlantic coast and the Atlantic Ocean. We live 20 minutes from the sea. And I went to an international school and this international school had kids from all over the world, you know. Uh-huh. They had Burmese kids, they had Italians, French, Canadian, German, English, French, Danish, you name it, they were there. And I was the kid that was in everybody's home. I just loved going and visiting. I had them back in my home, but I was always there and eating all sorts. And I'd come back and tell my mom, oh my God, at Sandra's house, we had roast duck. I'd never had roast duck in my life. <laughs> and it was, the, I, I could almost taste it now. And my Chinese friends would go around and their mums would, would just be sitting there chatting and they'd turn up with something, you know, these egg things with prawns in them. And I was everywhere. So the food thing started with me a very long time ago. And then my mother was an amazing cook. She was, she, you know, her name, they called her my language, which means she can cook. No, she rocks the kitchen is what it really means. And everybody knew her for that. If you invited her around, you sort of panicked. If she came into the kitchen, you thought, what's she going to say about the food? (laughs) But she she was amazing. Eight kids and she was always, you know, three square meals a day. We had the most amazing luck. I've got to say idyllic. And all our friends would come home with us and eat her food. And she sort of adopted everybody. The minute you came over the doorstep, you were hers. And I tell people, all my friends had shares in my mum. They all had oh, shares yeah. in her. And her food, and we still talk about her cooking. She sadly passed away just before, or right after the lockdown. Oh, I'm and sorry, Patty. Bad. What was her Dad. name? Her name was Emma. Emma. My mother oh, was Emma. Yes, wonderful, oh, wonderful her. woman. Yes. And um, I, I, I found it very difficult because I couldn't go home. There was a lockdown. But somehow I got this amazing strength. I felt as if she was with me. You know, mm, I'd mm. spoken to her on, on Good Friday. And she said to me, I was FaceTiming her. And she said, when am I going to see you again face to face? And I said, oh, the pandemic will soon. It'll be over by September. Don't worry. I'll be. We all thought it's going to be over, you know, very quickly. I said, mm. I'll see you about September or something. And she died on the Easter Sunday morning. Two oh, days after yeah. that phone call, yeah. And it was funny the way she asked, when am I going to see you? She said, when am I going to see you again? And I said, well, we're talking now. She said, I mean, face to face. And um, so, but she's with me and I really yes. want to celebrate my mother, celebrate her life of food, you know, all the things. It's all sort of keeps flooding back to me. I'm lying there and I'm going through my childhood and think of all the things she cooked and all her little tips. You know, she'd say things like, when you're in the kitchen and chopping, she said, if you've got a high stool, sit on it. You'll thank me one day because then your legs won't hurt. You know, when you <laughs> sit on the high stool and do the chopping. So I do just that, you know. And this really is along. like, she, in a way... Because we all have inspiration, I think, from people, if we are lucky enough in our life. And, you know, they say that the our childhood is a promise of our life. That's it. I believe it. Mm. I totally mm. believe it. I mean, we just had the most, she was, she was always there. She was always for, I don't know how she did it with eight kids and cooking all the time, baking. Oh, my goodness me. We would bring our friends and we they were ill in school. So come, mm. come, and, come and see my mum because secondary schools in Ghana are boarding schools it's just the way it is there they believe the children must go away to grow up you know so we all went to boarding school in Ghana and we would come home and if you were at school and you weren't too well 
I'd give you her number if you were going to the hospital. I'd say, call my mum. And she would have them at home and put them in bed and get a doctor to come and see them and that sort of thing. That's the kind of woman she was. But her cooking was absolutely unbelievable. But I was terrified of cooking as a kid because I didn't know how she put all these foods together. She had started the morning and then by 12.30, one, there was this fantastic spread. And I thought, oh, I'll never be able to do this. So I thought, I'm going to find a way. I'm going to do something else. And she always said, you must read. Reading is great and stuff. You must read. So do you know what I do, Mimi? I grab a book, see her coming. I grab a book mm-hmm. and pretend to be reading, looking really serious. And she disappeared. I think, phew, she's gone. And then she walked past again. But I think she noticed. So she found a way of getting me in there, teasing me in it gently. She'd call and say, can you just chop up those onions for me? And one job led to the other. And, and then the kitchen became exciting because I was tasting with her. And if her friends came, I could hear all the lovely conversations and little bits of gossip and stuff like that. <laughs> so I, when she said to me, can you taste that and tell me what you think is missing? That scared me. I thought, well, I don't know what I'm looking for. What does she mean? So I tasted and try and look very intelligent and mm, you know, sort of look around. I think, I said, well, I think it needs a little bit more onion. And she would say things like, you clever girl. <laughs> I don't know whether I was right or wrong, but I knew she loved onion. My mother swore when, I mean, she had, in the kitchen, you had to have onions. Absolutely. And she would say to me, I'd phone her and say, how many onions shall I use for that, that dish? She'd say, oh, good quantity. But she was a master, really, of her art. She absolutely was. And mm. she taught you, I mean, the aroma, you knew when the food was cooking. She'd tell you about the, the cooked smell. She would be there and she'd say, you can tell that rice is, is cooked. You can smell it. And it's true, you get the aroma and you're making a sauce. She never, ever put flour in her sauces to thicken the sauces. She blended a whole raw onion and poured it into the stew and would cook out the rawness of the onion and that would thicken the stew. So I do exactly that. And I pass that on. You know, at the Novelli Academy where, where, where I, I work, Mm. My goodness me. The guests all stand around the cooker and we have a fantastic time. It's not about a big screen and everybody wearing funny hats and none of that. We all stand yeah. around. It's almost like somebody's coming to your home because it's run from John Christoph's home anyway. And we stand around the cooker. I cook. They help. They watch. And we sit and eat it afterwards. So they get. Oh, how wonderful. It's just the best. It really is the best. So what do you do there, um, Patty? Because right. tell us a little bit about, because you run courses there, but how does it all work? Okay, I'll tell you how that came about. I mm. went to a nail bar. I went to a nail bar in Harpenden and I was sitting next to this really charming lady. She was so friendly and we're drying our nails and, and just ch- chit-chatting away about kids and all sorts. And she said to me, what do you do? And I said, oh, I'm writing a cookbook. And she turned and looked at me and said, oh my God, you've got to talk to Jean." And that was Jean Christophe Novelli's fiance. Amazing. So, wow. Yeah, so she took my details, and the very next day she fired an email, and mm-hmm. um, I had to bring some food in for them to try. Maybe you have no idea how I panicked. I'm thinking, <laughs> what on earth am I going to cook a celebrity chef? Well, well that I'm was a date, chef. Patty, a date with destiny for sure. A date with destiny. So I, I went, and, the, and then he lives three minutes' drive from me. Can you imagine? literally the door I get in the car I slip in a Michael Bublé song and three minutes I'm there <laughs> unbelievable I go in and I met his how did you feel day. it was quite intimidating I, w- I was nervous and excited mm. you know I went in and I had four dishes and he came in with you know the executive chef was there and she said it's nice and warm let's try it now and after tasting, I mean, he tasted, oh, this is amazing. You're fantastic. And all this lovely stuff. I thought, oh, what great, aren't I? <laughs> <laughs> so he tasted the food and he offered me the job as a chef. And I said, oh, no, 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 I'm not a chef. He said, you can cook. Mimi, my confidence went straight through the roof. Oh, my goodness. What a delight. So then this was about June, July time. In August, mm. he invited me over again to, to come and see exactly what he did. So on a Saturday, I would go in to assist him. Mm. just pass him a spoon or something or whatever and it was just in all the guests there and chat with the guests and everything I think he had somebody who used to meet the guests and they weren't in there that day and he said Patty can you just 
meet the guests when they come and chat and everything. And what I did know was he was watching all that. And he said to me afterwards, he said, you were so good. We want you to be front of house. I thought, wow. So I'm a guest chef and I'm front of house. This is amazing. This is just, just a dream, really. So this is such a wonderful story about dreams coming true. Absolutely. I'd see, I said to my husband, I found out that he lived in the area. And I said, can you imagine when I finish this book, I'd be able to go and show it to um, Novelli, wouldn't I? He said, when you finish it, you can do what you want, you know. And mm. lo and behold, here I am in his home. I get to work in the morning. He makes me tea or coffee. <laughs> oh, <laughs> and I drink it. As you do. As you do. As you do. <laughs> so <laughs> what happens is I go in because I'm, I'm front of house. Whatever course he's having, I'm there meeting the guests. Oh settling them and telling them how the day's going to pan out and just being there to help and assist. And then when I'm running a course, sometimes he's my sous chef. Can you imagine? He's there <laughs> handing me stuff and taking stuff away. And it's just brilliant. So the guests <laughs> come in, they book the course on the internet over through the Novelli Academy. Mm -hmm. They come, I get to know how many guests are coming, their allergies and food intolerances, what have you. And I'm cooking things like chicken peanut butter soup. Yum. Oh, oh my wow. God. Jollof rice, chicken suya, amazing stuff. Just delicious food. Green mango salads. It just goes on. It starts about 10.30 and we finish about 4.35 ish. It sounds incredible. It's, it's just the best gig. It, I'm, I've got and one is, coming what, so on people come to learn I can't wait. So, it's a oh, day thing. It, it really is an experience you come in just for a day and then you get okay. all the recipes we give you all the recipes to take home mm. with you as well or forward them to you via email or whatever oh, okay it's great for them to watch have champagne have some wine chit chat you know they don't want to go home I say to them have you got sleeping bags you might want to stay <laughs> <laughs> So that's how the day goes. And there's different courses as well. You know, Italian courses, dinner party courses. But mine is a taste of Africa. And I'm absolutely loving it. And I say to people, an African meal is a dining experience. And West African food is really the talk of the town now. I mean, the food's exciting. And it's soul food, really. Soul mm. food that's been enjoyed right across, across, you know, the world. And there's so much variety I come from Ghana, which is West Africa. You've got North Africa that's got, I think Africa really is fusion food. You've got North Africa. So all the Mediterranean and Arab foods trickle into North Africa. So they've got all those flavors and spices there. Then you go to East Africa. The Indian Ocean is right there. The Indian settlers came in across to East Africa, Kenya and all that, and stayed there, brought their spices along, and all that affected the food. You go down to South Africa, they have the Cape Malay Indonesian slaves, they've got Dutch influences, and then the indigenous flavors as well. Then you climb up to sub-Saharan Africa, Ghana, Nigeria, Sierra Leone, Liberia, all that. that's, I'm from Ghana, so we're in the West, and the Portuguese yeah. were in Ghana for 300 years. Can you imagine? Imagine that. I was reading about years. that, actually, and I can't... Yeah. yeah. So, so what the is the food, native language there? Well, in Ghana, mm. the, in, uh, we speak about a hundred different languages or more. hundred oh. different languages, Gaelic and all that. I speak three, but English is the national language because Ghana is a former British colony. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So we've got all those. The Portuguese brought all their ingredients. I mean, things like chili and cassava, I thought were Ghanaian because we've adopted and cooked with it. And the, it was the Portuguese who brought that in. And then it we've got wonderful speaking Africa. So the French speaking Africa has got, you know, they were colonized by the French as well. So they've got mm -hmm. all those dishes. If you have mayonnaise in a French speaking African country, incredible. They add chili and all sorts of different things. And we put a twist. And also because we don't do cookbooks in Africa, really, it's only beginning now, you know, cookbooks and all that. But mm -hmm. everything passed down from grandmothers through the generations. So if you, I'll cook a sauce, you go next door, same ingredients, they'll do it slightly differently. And it's did, so exciting. It, it is. And the way you speak about it, Patty, it's exciting. I'm getting excited about this whole thing now. Um, <laughs> and about my, mouth, my mouth is watering and I'm talking about it. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, it. 
how you're describing it, and I'm sure for people out there as well, for me, I'm in this sort of state of I'm there experiencing it and this chicken with this peanut peanut butter. butter. That's it. It's That's incredible. What I'm going to have. <laughs> on Instagram, you know, my last course was in February, and there's mm. a short video of me with this lady who was there, and we're just showing it to almost every day. Somebody's clicking on and liking it because it's just the most. It's got such flavour. There was a guy who, an electrician, who came in one day to do a little bit of something or other, and he was smelling the food and he kept looking at it. I said, "Don't worry, we'll give you some. We'll, we'll keep you some. Don't worry." <laughs> it's just packed with flavor i remember doing radio once and they said patty can you describe ghanaian food in three words i said flavor 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 that is it no flavor we're not eating it's got to have and it's flavor with things like chilies and african spices like grains of paradise grains of selim garlic ginger and all in moderation you know people say to me oh is it very spicy we use spice but the spice doesn't attack you it's just enough to get your taste buds, your, your taste buds will wake up and you'll begin to enjoy these flavors so different. And one of the best things I've done, I've got to say, is going into schools. Mimi, I, you know, I'm still dining out on the stories. The kids are incredible. Primary schools and secondary schools. And I remember going to this primary school in Harpenden and they came in and said, Patty, they're very excited. So we're going to calm them down and then we'll come and get you. So I thought, okay, I'm waiting in reception. And the teacher comes and says, yes, I think we're ready now. Let's go on. So I went in and their eyes were on stalks. You know, they were like <laughs> staring. And I said to them, okay, kids, I'm going to set up because I take a hob in with all the ingredients and everything and I cook in front of them. Mm. And so I'm going to uh, set up and then I'm going to introduce myself and get you to introduce yourself to me. And then I suddenly heard, hi, Patty. And I thought, hmm, where did he get that? I mean, he said it in a way like, he knew me. So I, thought, I probably know his mother. So I said to him, how did you know my name? He said, it's on the blackboard behind you. <laughs> I'm a little bit. It was so funny. I thought, oh, this is going to be a good day. And he came when I served up the food afterwards in little bamboo boats. He said, Patty, I've had eight tasters. And then he went, indeed, this woman is not a chef. She's a sorcerer. Oh, my God. People pay for taglines. I thought, I need to run with this one. And I remember telling it to a woman who came on a course, and she was an artist. Mm. said, Patty, I'm going to do a plaque for you with that. Last week in the post, I got the plaque. I got a mug with a quote on it, and I got a key ring with the same quote. So Did you know you what really? I do? I should write a kid's cookbook, I think. I, I think that would be a very good idea. In there. Absolutely. Because I watched the kids just wolfing up the food, enjoying it, totally different flavors, never been exposed to it before, but they watch you, they recognize she's put some onions in there, she's put some garlic, she's got ginger, she's added tomatoes, a bit of tomato puree, she's added some salted cod or um, smoked haddock or something, she's put these black eye beans in there, a few spices, and they're enjoying, the aroma's getting to them. And then I've got my favorite vegetable, which I think is the vegetable world's best kept secret, plantain. And I've got that. I've chopped that up, cubed it, spiced it, baked it in the oven, and mixed it in with this lovely bean dish and served it to these kids. Mimi, I'm, I'm still, I'm, you know, honestly, somebody contacted me yesterday and said, Patty, would you come to our school? So I can't wait to sort out a date and go and do that. Same thing for the kids. I think this sounds a wonderful idea, Patty. Brilliant. This is, must be your next project to do a like children's a revolution. Yeah, the, the plantain and beans, we call it, we call it red red in Ghana because originally it used to be cooked in palm fruit oil. So mm. it's called red red. It all looks sort of red. So I think it's my red red revolution. I'm taking around to the schools and the kids absolutely love it. They love it. And I come home and I'm buzzing. I, I'm buzzing for weeks. <laughs> <laughs> and do you have all these recipes in your head? I've got them all. I've got them. To, I've got two cookbooks. I had to write because I thought my kids are growing up in England and they might not. I can't let this disappear. My mother has passed down so many things. So I have put a twist on her twist and I've got these books. But I keep getting more ideas. You know, I'm lying in bed and um, I'm thinking, hmm, if I grill the plantain, 
like we do. I could slather it with some peanut butter rather than just peanuts like we do in Ghana. And then I could put some um, cashew nuts on that and then some dried cranberries and sesame seeds and pumpkin seeds. And I, I've done all that. And boy, does it taste amazing. And I'm, the recipes just keep coming to me. I mean, it, it's amazing. It's just incredible. incredible. In a way, it's like an art, you know, like um, someone who creates perfume. Yes. And it has to be completely right. Or someone who mixes tea yeah. and the flavour has to be absolutely right. But I think this is something, Patty, that you're born with. Yeah. Yes, you can learn more, it. Yeah. But the better, it, it just carries on. The more mm. creative you are, the more creative you become. So yeah. I'm thinking, of, I mean, I will. we have yam. Yam is a root vegetable, you know, mm. tea. and it's like potato. The skin's very hard, bark-like. It's almost like a tree when you see the the root, you know, the, the potato, the um, yam. You think, oh, my goodness me. And you peel it and there's this creamy, lovely, uh, pale yellow vegetable. Chop it, mash it, boil it and mash it up. And it tastes like potato. It's slightly different. And you can serve it up the same way as you would potato. So I will bake jacket potatoes, for instance, scoop out the potato, and then uh -huh. I'll fill the the, the the skins with the yam and put a bit of cheese on and bake that in the oven and you would just think oh this variety of potatoes is so lovely and it's yam <laughs> it's just now, so much there and I'm thinking of all these ideas all the time it's just my postman you're writing put, it down aren't you I am I am my postman will put letters in the door he'll walk away they'll come back and tap on the window and say what is it you cook he said the <laughs> aroma is all the way down the road <laughs> <laughs> but your family I mentioned, I mentioned him in my second cookbook I had to, oh. I had to. It's just, how it's lucky just, are your family how lucky you know I made a rod for my back when it, I would cook like my husband would want one thing and both my boys would want different things mm. and I cook all three real rod for my back so I've stopped all that but they just do love enjoying the dishes you know they really do love it and all my friends I mean I have people who say to me, Patty, if you want a taste, a taste of just ask me over. I'll be over like a shot. And a woman on Instagram said to me today, she said, do you deliver this food? <laughs> do you deliver? She says, because that is just amazing, you know. So it, here we are. It here is are. A wonderful. What a wonderful thing to do. And I want to ask you, Patty. Uh -huh. Now, I know that your mum was such a fantastic cook. Was she also in a way where you say that um, your friends used to come around and, you know, if they didn't feel too good? Was there also um, this medicinal wisdom that she had yeah. of yeah. what was good for a specific ailment? Or... Absolutely. Mimi, you hit the nail on the head. Do you know, yeah, this is mother, what interests me as my well. Mom's generation, my mum's generation wouldn't eat anything that didn't benefit them nutritionally. They just wouldn't. She's put ginger in there for the circulation. They talk about it. They wouldn't eat sugar. I mean, I've done, I've created this plantain cake. I found my mum up and I said, because most of plantain dishes are all savory. And plantain goes from, plantain is a starchy cousin of the banana. It looks just like a banana. Yeah. It's the vegetable and banana is the fruit. Same family, genus Mosai. And you cannot peel a plantain the same way you would peel a banana you'd have to chop the ends off the plantain. And it goes from green to yellow. When it goes from, in, when it's green, it's packed with starch. And it goes from green to yellow. And then when it's yellow, it's sweet. The starch converts to natural sugars. And then it goes yellow, black, and it's sweeter. Then the skins go black and you can make cakes, fritters, puddings, all that sort of stuff. So we make savory cakes, but I said, why can't we make a sweet cake? Like you would with cinnamon and vanilla. And, and my Nice, says, yeah. Give it a go. Give it a go. Get a cup of flour, get some baking powder. Da, 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 da. We talked about this and I made it. My husband thought, wow, this is incredible. So I make this cake at the Academy. I just did it on the Lorraine show and on John and Lisa's Christmas Kitchen. Mm -hmm. And it's plantain with tinned pears and raspberry or plantain with guava, plantain with chocolate and raspberry. It's incredible. And I say it's got no sugar, no butter. No eggs, no kidding. You can have your cake and eat it. You absolutely can have your cake and eat it because 
there's no sugar in there. And people are like, wow, but it's sweet because the plantain has got the natural sweetness when it ripens. And when it goes black, skins go black, very much like bananas where you make the banana cakes from it's really soft. Plantains mm. are the same. And you can make this absolutely delicious cake with it. And, I, you know, I'm going to a friend's party the weekend. She does not. I'm going to be baking her some of my cake. <laughs> oh, how lovely. I wait to take some for her. But it, it really is a revelation. People try and they think, wow, you know, if, you've, if you're glu- and it's gluten free and it's vegan, so it covers everybody. And if you've got, if you're a celiac, the doctors will tell you two top ingredients, plantain and sweet potato. So my second cookbook, for instance, has got 51 ideas, 51 ways with plantain. And I just kept on creating. I went with the natural um, um, dishes that we do. And then I, I started testing different things. And I thought, well, why not? And I did. And it's, it's just been, it's been fantastic. It's so much fun. So much fun. The creativity is just absolutely off the scale. Then I run, oh, I tell you what, maybe I run spice workshops. Yes, I wanted to ask you about that. that. Tell us more about that. That oh. is something that I would find absolutely adorable to do. You know, I did one, I think it was at the exchange in Eric last month. Mm-hmm. We just had the best time because I've got the African spices. I've got the European spices. I've got all sorts of spices. So I get to tell you where you can find the spices. I get to tell you how you can store them and what you can cook with those spices. And have you ever heard of grains of paradise? No. They're incredible. Apparently the first, I heard this on telly about three weeks ago, but uh-huh. the first um, hot cross buns had grains of paradise in them. My husband turned and looked at me. I said, did you hear that? <laughs> <laughs> and they're a lovely little, they're tiny little, reddish brown seeds and they're part of the ginger family and they're sort of brown on the outside and they're white on the inside when you bite into it you think "Mm, this is quite and then suddenly your mouth gets really warm you get this spice heat it's not heat as you would get from a chili Mm -hmm. it's a different kind of heat and they are amazing and I can remember I was in um I think I was in a deli in Hitchin once in a queue waiting to pay and I suddenly saw them on a shelf I jumped out of the queue and I grabbed all the ones on the shelf. I thought, oh, I cannot believe this because I normally get them off the internet from a company called Seasoned Pioneers. And they, they you know, they, they send me lots of spices because they know I do all these workshops. But, you know, we get to touch the spices and show people how to get the best out of spices. There's, people will buy fennel, they'll buy cumin for a dish, and then they'll just leave them in the cupboard and think, oh, I've used, unless I'm going to do that dish again, I won't need it. No, experiment, play with them, jump outside the box, you know, be creative, free yourself. Don't tie yourself to exactly what one person is saying. I have an Israeli friend who said, if you cook like the book, your food will taste like the book. I mean, with recipes, I will read a recipe, then I'll close the book, get the ingredients, and then I'll just start cooking. I suppose it doesn't come easy to everybody, but for me, it does because we never really cooked with cookbooks. And I feel almost like my hands are tied if I'm cooking with, you know, looking at every sentence. And yeah, and yeah. you can't. You've got to free yourself and play with ingredients. And that's how you'll come up with extraordinary things. I mean, did you know that mayonnaise, for instance, was a mistake? No. Mayonnaise was a mistake. A Spanish chef was cooking for the Spanish king. And he was mixing up the eggs or the egg yolks or whatever with whatever. And he tipped something into it by mistake and he just carried on whisking. And it was in a town called M-A-H-O-N. I don't know whether it's pronounced Mahon or Mahon. Mm. And it became Mahonaise. And Mahonaise eventually became mayonnaise. And what a fantastic mistake. <laughs> because every Absolutely. day, every Absolutely. day somewhere in the world, someone is cooking or slathering mayonnaise on a sandwich or using it in a sauce or something. Mm, mm, so th- mm. th- that, that's the thing about, you know, if you cook and make mistakes, it's no mistake. It's creative. You've come up with, you've only come up with something genius, something totally different, you know? So Absolutely. there you go. It's a magic. You really are. It is like a magician. <laughs> or an alchemist that puts things together and sort of, I suppose, 
in a way, Patty, it's like you enchant people yeah. with it because yeah. there is a lot to be said about food. And I know like chocolatiers, especially uh-huh. that, um, you know, put all these blends together and it is something that you do. It's, it's actually like you said at the beginning, it's soul food. It's not it just fast food or what everybody nope, nope. is. It's actually for the soul. Yeah. Real food for the soul. And what I find about Ghanaian food, like where I'm from, I was I, I remember reading in the British Medical Journal, The Lancet, that it was the sixth healthiest food in the world. And I thought, wow, because th- there's no dairy in our foods. We don't have any of that. Sorry, I just dropped something. The um there's no dairy in the foods. Everything is all fresh. I met a guy on a plane going to Ghana once. I was sitting next to him. We got chatting. And um, I said, um, what, what do you do? He says, I'm working for Tala Oil in, in Ghana. And I said, well, how do you like Ghana? He said, I, I, he said, I just adore it. He said, my kids had all these allergies and I was petrified taking them out there. Within two weeks of arriving in Ghana, every allergy disappeared. Every allergy. Because 90% of the food is organic. You know, uh. and it's all fresh stuff. And even with our spices, we tend to use the fresh spices like ginger and garlic and t- fresh turmeric and stuff like that. And Scotch bonnet chilies, you know, very similar. If you like Thai food, you love mm. Ghanaian food because we, we cook very similar things. I think we've got very similar climate. A lot of the um, hot countries along the equator. You so sold it to me anyway. Yeah, very similar <laughs> foods. And it's just, oh, I, I just, I love spoiling people. And I'm going to be coll- collaborating with a restaurant very soon. And I'm excited. We're going to have a West African night. I Ooh. cannot wait. Cannot wait. How wonderful. Now, Patty, do you, um, because of course you're the expert in all of this and you know the properties of each ingredient. I would I love, <laughs> Yeah. I would love to have a book um, by yourself, of course, okay. where yeah. you could put all these ingredients and these recipes because I do therapy and things. And a friend uh-huh. of mine asked me to ask you specifically okay. um, about medicinal herbs, medicinal food, how for certain conditions you can put recipes together. Yes. And yes. you what know, a brilliant idea. Wonderful. Because all herbs and mm. all spices are medicinal. They're therapeutics. Yeah. That's exactly what they are to put that spring back into your mm. step. Yes. All herbs and spices are therapeutic. You've just got to know what to use this for or what to use that for. That sort of thing. So I'll be very happy to do that. Yes. And maybe you could do a workshop and I will yes. come and see you. Yes, wonderful. Wonderful. That would be great. I'm hoping you know, to do, I'm hoping to do a workshop very, very soon with um, a company in Harpenden. So when I've got all that together, I know the dates, I'll put it out on social media and I will definitely tag you and let yeah. you know. Let me know for sure, because it would be such an interesting workshop and also a book because my yeah. friend's daughter has a condition to do. I, I'm not sure what it is um I don't think it's a celiac or it's or it's borderline but it all depended on food and I have a lot of allergies so yeah. I watch the sort of things that I eat and I definitely yeah. know that certain foods can bring lots of re- relief for um you know and herbs for s- so many different conditions so I think doing something like that would be so beneficial Incredible. I mean, look at turmeric, for instance. Yes. It's the spice of the moment. And yes. the health benefits are as long as my arm. Yeah. It's yeah. just unbelievable. You can buy it fresh. You snap it in this bright orange, just like ginger, part of that family. And you can just grate that into your curries and your stews. You can make teas with it in the morning. You know, make your turmeric tea with some fresh ginger. Oh, I do that with honey. Wonderful. Mix some yes. honey in with it. Yeah, it's just amazing. It's just amazing. You know, I can remember going to Ghana once. You know, I went to see my mum 
every every uh, year for um, the month of January because that was her birthday month. And I was there for an entire month. I stayed with her for four weeks, sometimes five, sometimes six, sometimes seven, and just spent time with her. And I remember she had this girl staying who was helping her with the cleaning and stuff in the house. And I'd taken some green and black organic chocolate to Ghana. Mm. So I opened the fridge and I took a bar out and gave it to this girl. And she said to me, what's that? And she was somebody who had come from a village, so she didn't really know what it was. And I explained, and she said, has it got sugar? And I said, yes. And she said, mm, I don't want that because it'd be bad for my teeth. She was about 19, 20. I thought, wow. And you see, people they've got absolutely perfect teeth. They don't go to the dentist. You know, every morning for, um, you know, we use toothbrushes and everything here. But in Ghana, they'll use what they call the chewing stick and then the toothbrush afterwards. And the chewing sticks are antifungal, antiviral, antibacterial. And it's from a particular tree. And you just chew on it and just sort of scrub your teeth with them before you use your toothbrush and that. And the cinnamon tree, they do exactly the same thing, licorice root. It's incredible. And there are all these things out there that people just don't know about. And we need to know. Yes, yes. We need to know, especially if we're going to reconnect. And then it's delicious. Exactly. And then it's so delicious. You're thinking, I'm going to steam some fish. So I'll get some star anise and I'll crush a little bit of that. I'll prick the scotch bonnet. I won't pierce it because I don't want it too hot. It's the only chili that's got both flavor and heat. So I'll just prick it so it can give the flavor, put some onions or shallots or whatever, slices of ginger, a bit of onion, and just wrap it up on papiot, as they say, and just put it in the oven and let that steam. And the flavor, when that comes out of there, oh my goodness, I can't tell you. My mouth is watered ready. <laughs> Now, do you have these um, recipes in either of your books? I have some, not all of them, but I'm going to write again. I'm definitely going to write more another book. I want to do the kids one, but I want to do something else. The spice one, because I've been running spice workshops and John Christoph calls me the queen of spice, you know. Yeah. So I've really got to own that and write a spice a spice book and just show people, you know, take a few spices that are in the shops. They say people cook about nine dishes throughout their lives and they hang around the same dishes, which is sort of true. You know, you jump out a bit and you try something else, then you're back to something you grew up with. But if you can find a healthier way of doing that, I think that's where the power lies. Yeah, that's ab- the power. Absolutely. absolutely. I mean, ginger, if you have a cough in Ghana, Mm. The sliced strips of ginger, put that on a plate with a bit of sugar, and then you just dab the ginger in the sugar, and then you just chew on that and swallow it, and just swallow, and that cough will disappear. I mean, when my kids were younger, my mum would call and I'd be chatting, and somebody go, <coughs> and she'd go, "Who's that? Who's coughing?" <laughs> and she said, "Then she said to me, have you no lemons or, or ginger or grains of you sell them? She just get some of that, boil it, add a teaspoon of honey, and." And that sort of thing. And she'll give you, you know, th- that medication right over the phone, just like that. Just like that. And you'll mix it. It might not taste great, but it works. Yeah. It works. And it's all healthy stuff. You know, you know what ginger is and you know what limes are and mm-hmm. all that mm-hmm. sort of stuff. And um, yes, why not? Ginger, lime. And Make Patty, we need that healthy. wisdom. Oh, absolutely. Have you ever tried hibiscus? Dried yes, hibiscus I flour. drink hibiscus tea. Wonderful. Now, mm. if you go, now I, I found in, I think it was Morrison's, is the one supermarket I've seen the dried hibiscus flowers. I buy it in Asian food shops. That's why I've seen it as well, mm. or first saw it. And you steep it just as you would tea and just drink that. And you can steep that, add some pineapple skins. You scrub your pineapples, slice the skins and stalks, wash them and drop them in with the slices of lemon or chunks of lemon and the hibiscus and make this drink with a few other spices and that and boil it and and just drink that. And I remember when COVID hit, the whole country of Ghana, every home was having this drink. Hibiscus with pineapple, ginger, lemons, and a couple of other spices. And they'd make a big pot and everybody was drinking that. 
everybody. It sounds wonderful, actually. Mm-hmm. And especially well. in a clear teapot where you can see all of the ingredients. Wonderful. Now you say it, I must go. I've just saw one in a shop, so I must go and get that clear teapot. <laughs> <laughs> but you've just totally made this beautiful picture for me and yeah. I can see it there. All sort of, it's like a storm in a teacup, you know, when yes. you pour the hot water, pour it in there, you can see everything just sort of running around in the pot. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's, really, it's wonderful. I love it. I love what you do. And yes. um, you I are adore. taking me on a journey with all of this. Oh, thank you. Thank you. It, you must, you've, like, I've got to meet you. You've got to eat, I've got to treat you to this chicken peanut butter soup. You have to. I've got it on my website, pattysmenu.com. And mm. people, I did that on Lorraine. It's one, I did about four different dishes oh on the real dishes for Christmas. And that's one of them. And people absolutely adore it. Adore it. It sounds wonderful, actually. And, it's and so, you know, the thing about it, sorry, sorry to interrupt you there. Finish, sorry. No, no, I was just going to say, do you have it with rice? You can have it with rice. You can have it with potato. Mm. You can have it with sweet potato. You can have it with whatever you want. Absolutely delicious. You can have it with couscous. Oh. All that stuff out there, whatever you want, you can have it with it. And it, it's, nothing is fried. What I love about the soup, nothing is fried. You're making your soup. It's not doing the mirepoix, the vegetables and none of that. You've got your chicken. The thing we do is we cook meat and fish on the bone. That is one difference between our cooking and Western cooking. And another difference is if you're frying onions, they've got mm. to sort of brown and caramelize a bit before you add other ingredients because that brings a sweetness to the dish. Now, with the peanut butter soup, you've got your chicken pieces bone mm. in because that's where you're going to get the stock from and the great flavor. And then you blend your tomatoes, onions, uh, ginger I don't blend the chili because I sort of pierce it and drop it in so I can control the heat then just keep squashing it against the side of the pan to release more of the juices and I taste at a stage and think "Mm, I've got enough chili then you take it out if you can take your chili you can blend the whole chili or two or three but then you everything gets poured over the chicken and the chicken poaches in this tomato onion and ginger and garlic um sauce and when the juices run clear, you add a bit of hot water to that and then peanut butter with hot water, you whisk that up and pour it over that and just cover it and let it cook. I, I swear to you, you start with your thing, what am I doing? And then you suddenly think, oh my God. <laughs> it is amazing. The aroma, the aroma is insane. You think, and the taste, I honestly, I can't describe You've taken it. me on a journey, that's it. Now, uh, it's I'm taking you with me. You're coming with me. Yes, because I am now on one of these, you know, um, the Silk Road, where they used to sort of trade in spices and all things nice and all sorts of incenses and, you know, all sorts of things. That's where I am right now. It's like I feel that I'm in this market with you. And a spice journey. It's It's a mind trip through the spices, isn't it? Yes. It's like a mind trip. Mm. It, it is one you've taken me there definitely yeah, needed, needed. <laughs> and another dish I cook a lot I must tell you about is black eye beans it's so cheap and so delicious a tin of black eye beans Mimi you make the fantastic Ghanaian or West African tomato sauce uh-huh. we call this gravy is you fry your onions add your tomatoes onions your chili garlic and some tomato puree as well to intensify the tomato flavour and you build on it because we, we we sort of layer flavor. You can add the ginger or you can leave it out. And we add what we call prawn powder. And it's prawns that are air dried and ground into a powder. The Indonesians do the same thing. They add it to their dishes and you sprinkle a bit of that into your food. It's what you call that umami. Oh, my God. It's so <laughs> nice. It's just so, so nice. My goodness. I did I did a Zoom for the Guild of Food Writers the other day and I was cooking you know, for them. And one woman said, Patty, I cheated. I tried it before. It was a fish stew. She said, I didn't even know fish stew could be done this way. So different. And she <laughs> just tasted, she said the food was so delicious. And it makes me feel so proud that I share a little bit of what my mum taught me, something from Ghana, share with the Beautiful. world. Share with the world. 
Oh, this is so beautiful. It's a legacy, Patty, and it's a real treasure that you are sharing such beautiful food and beautiful knowledge. And I want to ask you, uh-huh. have you always done this? Is this something that you knew as you were growing up after your mum had taught you how to cook? Um, is this something that you knew this was the path that you would take? Not at all. Not at all. If I was going to be anything, all my friends said, Patty, we thought you were going to be an actress. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to be an actress because I used to enter. I lived in America for a year on a program called AFS, where I won the scholarship and lived with an American family, went to high school for a year and had the most amazing 365 glorious days of my life in America. Uh And 16 years old, came back when I was 17. And I did lots of speech contests and I was entering all this stuff and did really well. She's going to be an actress. She's going to be an actress. And um, I didn't. I became a PA and then came here with my husband, met him in Ghana. My husband's English from Devon, met him in Ghana and we came over to England. And I I did this. I worked as a PA. And when I gave up work and stayed at home is when my cooking really took off. Because I had the kids and I thought, I'm in my kitchen. Nobody's going to judge me. I'm going to do what I want. And everything my mum had done came flooding back to me, just came flooding back. I'd see the ingredients, I'd think, oh, I need some okra. And you couldn't get okra in the supermarket. So I'd buy um, courgettes and cut them into strips so they looked like okra in my dish. <laughs> it didn't taste the same, but it still was, I created something else with it. And it was just so much fun. And people would say to me, oh, you've got to give me that recipe. You know that pork dish? And I thought, what pork dish? I, I didn't know what they were talking about. I thought, oh my goodness me, I've got all the, this knowledge there. And it's when this friend of mine said, if you do not write the book, I'm going to be so disappointed, really, because the food really does taste good. And then you, sometimes you don't think you're as good as they're saying, I'm thinking, oh, is anybody really going to like this? And then you look at their face and you think, oh my God, they really do like it. <laughs> it, it, it yeah. it's, it's amazing the path that you took and yeah. how this date with destiny yeah, um, I, I remember meeting a woman, this lovely lady that I, I tend to meet in supermarkets, and she she calls me Patricia, <laughs> like my dad used to. And she said, Patricia, I haven't seen you in ages. What have you been up to? And I said, oh, a chance meeting with this um, celebrity chef's wife. And, da, 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 da. And, I, and she said, Patricia, nothing random, nothing. She said, life is what happens to you when you're going to be making plans. Yes. And I think she was right because... I just have to, I find that it is a, it gives me a platform to talk about to so many different people mm-hmm. about where I'm from, what I do, how I came into any of this. And they, they learn about Ghana. People say to me, Patty, I, I've known about Ghana, but never known all this. It's very interesting, mm-hmm. you know. And, you know, I went to a Catholic girls boarding school in Ghana run by Irish nuns from rat mines in Dublin. They were in Ghana. <laughs> no kidding. They, the, the, the nuns of the St. Louis order, they were in Ghana. You know, St. Louis girls. And the, oh. Incredible, incredible. But I never, ever thought I was going to cook. Going back to your question, I never thought it was going to be something that I do, ever. You never had an inkling? No, I never thought, oh, I'm going to be a chef or no, never, never. Mm. I cook nice food. I'm going to have nice parties. And give people nice food. They come to a party. They'll enjoy the food. I never thought it was going. To, I was going to earn from it the way I do, doing workshops or running private classes in people's homes or doing the academy or going into schools and food festivals. Now that is just the best, just the best. Going up and you've got an audience sitting there, and you think, oh, at first I thought, what if they get up and walk away? What am I going to do? But then you hook them and they're there and they start to smell the food. Mm. And they think, wow, I'm going to try this. So I always take tasters and people try afterwards as well. So it, it's, it's been a fabulous journey, just sharing, sharing a bit of me and a bit of Ghana from my corner of Africa. It's been fabulous. It's beautiful. And what other things do you do? So you do radio you do tv and you go into i've school. done some tv i did the lorraine i did john and lisa's christmas mm-hmm. and then i did channel five last christmas it was a taste 
testing Aldi versus Harrods, who does Christmas better, you know, blind tasting. So I did uh-huh. that before Christmas, which is very interesting, very interesting results. And then um, I do private classes for people in their homes. I go into schools and do demo- demonstrations for kids. I work at the Novelli Academy. I'm there tomorrow, no, 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 Saturday, doing a corporate event there. Um, I do festivals and I write and get my food into magazines. It, it, it's tough. It's tough going because you've got to push and push. It's a big world. Everybody's in there doing it. So many people are at it. So you've got to try and get in, get an angle and get in there. But I do try and get it in there. Get well, I think you're very successful. Thank you. In what you do. I, it, remarkably so. And oh, awesome. you should be very proud of yourself, really, Patty, because you have achieved so much and this oh do you know what it is such a wonderful thing and a beautiful thing to hear somebody such as yourself have this passion for life and this passion for what they do it's so rare but oh it my is, God. it's yeah. such a beauty to hear yeah. I'm so passionate I Mimi I am so passionate if the little chickens would would, would list, stop and listen, I would tell chickens about <laughs> I do. I mean, I, I go into boutiques and stuff, and I start talking to, to girls in there about stuff. I went to a shop once, and um lady said, are you the lady that gave the salad dressing to so-and-so? And I thought, oh, my God, I can't believe this. Because <laughs> I gave, I went to a friend's house, you know, for, for, for supper one evening, and she brought out this salad. And the dressing was delicious. I said to her, oh, D, you've got to give me that uh, recipe. Your dressing was delicious. She burst out laughing. She said, you gave it to me 15 years ago. <laughs> she said, I was sitting in your kitchen and you made up this. You were opening the cupboard and mixing things together. She said, you made this and I took it off you there. And I said, you'll have to reteach me because I've forgotten it. So you've got to write things down. You really have to write things down. You come up with something like that. And I did it. I think she gave it to me. She gave it back to me, obviously. And I did it. And last week I did a recipe on Instagram. And this woman came and said, oh, Patty, I did your recipe. It was delicious. She said, I didn't even have lettuce. So I added spinach. And it was just as good. And the thrill I got from hearing that. If one person comes back and says, Patty, I love that. And when I see little kids in schools and the boys shouting, you know, indeed, she's not a chef, he's a sorcerer. I think I've been called pa- plantain patty, a plantain magician. Now I'm a sorcerer. <laughs> I do have a broomstick as well. <laughs> or oh, you are an alchemist. Exactly, I'm an alchemist. Honestly, I mix these. This woman said to me, or somebody wrote once that, Patty, you are a composer of cuisine. Because he says, I'm a musician. He said, I compose music. He said, but what you've done with plantain, he said, I would never have thought anybody could have done that with plantain. 51 ways, <laughs> you know, and daring, daring to be different. I have no fear in that kitchen. It's savory. You know, if it's a, um, a cake, that's chemistry. So if it says two spoons, you've got to add two spoons. If it says signal, half of that, you've got. But when it comes to savory food, please just release yourself. Really, just go with it. If it says you need three onions and you've got two and a half uh, leek in the fridge, chop up the leek. I tell you what, you will surprise yourself and enjoy, enjoy food. And food is to be enjoyed, you know, and spice it up. Wake up your taste buds and soak it all up and live yes live yes I do this um, I do a a, a fruit salad and I did that last year it was Waitrose saw the um zoom I did for the Guild of Food Writers and they contacted me and said Patty that was really good loved it can you give us a couple of recipes for the summer so last summer I gave them two recipes and I gave them a chicken recipe in July and I gave them a fruit salad in the August I do the syrup to go with the fruit salad with lemongrass and stuff, and it is to die for. Delicious, delicious, really. I'm always thinking outside the box. I think because of the creativity, I'm thinking, what can I do? What can I? And I see something, I might see a flower or I might see something in a shop, and it will remind me of something else, and then I'll, I'll use it. I'll try that. I remember the first time I saw bread sauce 
And I, I, I thought it was porridge. I thought it was porridge oats. <laughs> and I thought, oh, that looks like porridge. It's got a bay leaf or whatever. So, so then I thought, oh, I'm going to do porridge and put cinnamon stick or an African spice. And, and I did it. And it was delicious. And then I thought, oh, I'm going to make a chocolate porridge. And a few years ago, I just got some cocoa powder and mixed it in with the porridge. I put a little bit of coffee sometimes and then break chunks That's of That's a good idea. Oh, you've got to do it. It's brilliant. And then get some frozen raspberries from the freezer. And throw them in at the end. Oh, that sounds very nice. Yeah, sugar. You drizzle with a little bit of honey. And then, instead of cream, add tinned evaporated milk. Oh, <gasps> unsweetened. Oh, my goodness. That chocolate porridge. It's so comforting. And then when you put a little bit of coffee, you could smell the, uh, the, 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 the smell of coffee just takes me to another place. I love I don't drink a lot of coffee, but I love it in food. Mm, mm. Oh, just. But is the porridge hot, Patty, or is it cold? Hot. Hot. Oh, hot porridge. Okay. Okay. Hot water. The, 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 the porridge oats mix it with a bit of cold water, get that sort of bubbling away. And the cocoa and then, powder. Cocoa powder, spoon or two in there, get it going. Well, that then, sounds absolutely amazing. Beautiful. It really is beautiful. I'm going to try that. Got the video on Instagram. I'm going to share it again on Facebook just for you to see tonight. Oh, thank you. I'm going to share that. Yeah. I'm going to. This This is wonderful. What a good idea. My goodness. And yes, I think yes. this and it's is good for you. And it's, dark, it's dark chocolate. It's so good for you as well. Yeah. Is there a particular um, brand that you use? Um, uh, not really. I just go for dark. green. I use green and black organics. Um, mm. chocolate powder I find that in Waitrose and you know most supermarkets the cocoa powder any cocoa powder will do mm. and with dark chocolate and then just put that in there and if you've got coffee just a teeny weeny bit you don't even have to add the coffee and then you don't add sugar but you drizzle it with a bit of honey at the end and then throw the bit raspberries in and then the raspberries and blueberries all start to sort of ooze their goodness into the porridge and everything's sort of oh. <laughs> I've actually do you know what I bought um, I bought those little Dutchy things um, with frozen fruit, and they are. Do you know them in Waitrose? And they um, have all sorts of things like berries and raspberries, and they're that's frozen. It. Yeah, that's the one. That's what I get. Exactly that. Yes, I've just the discovered frozen, those. They're like, lovely. Yeah, like the uh, fruits of the forest, or whatever they call it. Yes. And then just a you know handful of that. You've got blackberries in there, a bit of cranberries, all dry, all frozen, and just scatter all that into um, your porridge. It's so pretty to look at. Food has got to look good. Oh, I'm getting all about excited the about this dish now. It's all about the senses. You need to smell it, then you see it. You soak it up with your eyes. You can the sounds of the sizzling and the bubbling and all sorts of stuff, and then you eat it. And there's satisfaction guaranteed. It is. It's about the senses. You're right. And what you're oh, actually definitely. doing is you are, in a way, igniting the senses. So when you are talking about it, it's actually that it, my ears are open, my eyes, I'm smiling yeah, all right. the way through. <laughs> no, honestly, Mimi, it's so true. It's so true. I mean, you, you just, I, I, honestly, I, I just love food. And you're I such a good food. storyteller. <laughs> oh, my, my mum was a brilliant storyteller. She talks about food in a way that makes you want to get up and go and cook it right away. She, she yeah. had this way. She'd lower her voice. She there was every. She did every. It was like drama. And I think <laughs> because I love acting, when I get behind the cooker, it's a performance. Yes, <laughs> it really is a performance for me. And I've got guests there, and I bounce off the guests, and it's just wonderful. I do dinner parties sometimes. I'm in there and they're like, Patty, we're going to keep you here. You're not going to go home. You're going to stay. <laughs> we're going to kidnap you and keep <laughs> you. <laughs> and it's just so nice to see people enjoy. Yeah. There's a kind of satisfaction that I get and fulfillment seeing people truly and thoroughly enjoying because it's something they haven't been exposed to. And yeah. I really think this thing with, you know, Ghanaian food and West African food, it's nice that it's coming to the table now. The ingredients are coming into the shops. The spices are coming in. Everything is coming in gradually. And then if I can catch the kids in school, 
and cook for them. Can you imagine? Yeah. Yeah, they, 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 this little boy said, I'm so going to get my mum to buy your book. I'm so going to get her to buy your book. I'm going to buy it. I'm and going to buy lovely. it and I'm going to try it. Oh, you're going to love it. Mimi, I've got a copy for you. Oh, I, I cannot I wait. I cannot. And I can't wait for us to do a little magical trip on yes. buying spices together. Yes. We should. We should. We should. Because that's it. I am now there. I'm on the magic carpet and we're in some bazaar somewhere yes. and we're buying so all these tastes and these and beautiful scents. You know, and grinding them. And with spices, you've got to buy them in very small quantities. Because after three months and six months, you know, uh-huh. don't taste right. If you buy them already ground, their volatile oils are disappearing. Ah, okay. So you grind them when you need to use them. You get your cumin, you toast it, get your mm. soup, you use the mortar, and you're grinding away in there. And whatever else. And it's potent then. You get the best flavor right there. But you buy them all grand, you don't know how long they've been on the shelf for, you know, except oh, if you're going to use okay. quantity and, you know, you're going to use it over a period of time. And But it's always best to get them um, fresh. That's a good point, actually. And sort of a mortar and pestle. Whole, whole spices, much better. Whole spices. And do you infuse oils, Patty? I, do you know, the oil, only oil I've really infused is chili. I'd make a chili oil or garlic oil in the kitchen. Mm, just for okay. that. Or some oil for my cooking. But I haven't. But I should, because the way I love to cook and try things is just finding the time to do everything. <laughs> I need 25 I hours a day, eight days a I week. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> but do you have your own, or is that something in the pipeline? For example, um, a patty, you know, whole brand of oils or products i'm um I'm, I'm, I'm thinking i'm thinking that's a good idea mm-hmm. that would be fantastic because i am thinking we've got you you know as the show lady as the alchemist and then we have the author and then we want to buy something yeah. I do right. these tomato. I do these tomato sauces, and sometimes I take them too. When I do food festivals, I take them along, or when I run courses, or or a lot of the tastes and demonstrations that I do, mm-hmm. I'll do these. I'll take these sauces along, and I'll sell them, and they go just like that. And this one said to me, on she said, Patty, when I bought it, I was, we were off on holiday, so I just put it in the fridge. So we came back after a month, and it was perfect. I said, yes, because it's it, it won't go off. It's got the spices. I've cooked it in there in oil and everything, and it's preserved. So I will do more of that. I should. It's finding the time and the bal- getting the right balance with what I do. It's but people, up, if you doing... could find someone to do it, That's um, the thing. let them do it and let them sell it for you. People okay. now listening, I would go out and buy whatever product – um you sold yeah okay okay and putting spices together like we've got yes. the make which is just gorgeous it's very much mm. like um the ordinary nutmeg and That's you can use the one of that and i use that in stews and people are like oh i, I, I watch them and they're thinking i'm looking at them and thinking wow and ingredients that are around and they, they just do not know ever heard of them you know, and now you can get everything online. Now yeah. online, temper it, it'll come. So it's you don't need a visa to go to Ghana. Just right here, we can do it. Although I wouldn't mind going to Ghana. Yes. Oh my goodness! Right along the Atlantic Ocean. Yeah, I wouldn't mind. I have to say, I I would love to go. Yeah, sunshine, great music, yeah. friendly faces, happy yeah. people. Yeah. What a delight, really. And oh my goodness, it's been an absolute pleasure to have you here. Thank you. I've learned and it. you have rekindled a, a taste <laughs> for life, really. Yes, yes. I love that. I, 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 sometimes I wear my husband out. I mean, I, I wake up, he says, I've never seen anybody who goes from zero to 100 in seconds. <laughs> I bet it away. I've got something, you know, something on my mind, maybe something I dreamt about or something I'm thinking, or it's all that I'm buzzing all the time. I totally love life. 
we're here to live and enjoy. We are indeed. Spread joy and give joy and embrace joy. And I honestly, I'm so grateful. I'm yeah. so grateful. Oh, just beautiful. Just, just beautiful. beautiful. All of this, yeah. Oh, now, Patty, where can people find your books and all about you and what you do and if they okay. want to book yeah. a course or yeah. tell us more about that before we go. Okay. okay, right. My books, when I started writing these books about 10 years ago, I couldn't find a publisher. They told me it was a niche market and, you know, nobody would be interested and it was very difficult. So I went to a food, uh, um, a book festival and at this thing, I found that I could self-publish. So that's what I do. So they're on Amazon. Mm -hmm. but a plate in the Sun and a date with plantain, are both on Amazon. And that's how people buy the books. And I also buy some with me if I'm doing a festival or I'm running a class. My next class at the Academy is on the 5th of July. And that can be booked online through the Novelli Academy, the John Christophe Novelli Academy, 5th July. And people book, and I always have books there you know, signing for them and for mm -hmm. people to buy books there. And I'm also on Instagram as Patty's Menu. Patty with an I. Mm -hmm. S-M-E-N-U, Patty's Menu, one word. And I'm on Instagram. And I'm, my website is also www.pattysmenu.com. So there's sample recipes there for people to try as well. Lots about me. And I do poetry as well. Oh, do you? I my first poem. I love, 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 loved Maya Angelou. So I just watched her videos and everything, and I was just so inspired by her. I've written a poem to celebrate her, and I performed it on um, on her birthday, which would what would have been her birthday, her ninety fifth birthday on fourth April. Oh, I love her. Would you yeah. like to recite it now? Yes, I would. Okay. Please. Always yeah. talked about being a rainbow in the cloud for people, being there to help, being there for other people to follow and that. And um, so I wrote this poem titled, My Angelou, I never met her, yet I miss her. Sassy and sophisticated, elegant and eloquent, her voice had an energy, a melody, a clarity, an unmistakable tone. Her entrance? Majestic at six foot, fantastic. Her aura was all her own. Then came her delivery. Captivating and confident, waxing lyrical, she sprinkled this Maya magic that held a room in the palm of her hand. Her every word engaging and compelling, as if a command. Poetry in motion, Maya Angelou had you mesmerized and spellbound. With piercing and brutal honesty, she unraveled and shared her life story in all its colourful glory, leaving you both shaken and stirred. Like an awakening, you soaked up her every word. For as she spoke, she taught. If you say someone's walking over you, you're standing in the way, she would say. I never met you, yet I miss you. So thank you, Aunt Maya, for feeding my fire and all you inspire. Your fire burns bright, a shining light for generations, forever. You do make us proud. So I'll shout it out loud. You are the perfect rainbow in the cloud. That's it. I love it. <laughs> I love it. Patty, I love it. Have you published um, it anywhere? I have got it on my, on, on, um, on Instagram, and I've got it on my website. And somebody said to me recently, said, Patty, you've got to get it into the Maya Angelou Museum in New York. So I'm going to find a way. Find a there way must to be a that. way. There must be a way. It actually, I, I love her. I think yeah. she was a wonderful person. I totally love her. inspiring. The whole magnetic. Uh, Ma honestly, was magic. Magic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I was spellbound just way. watching her. Every time I've got to find a way to get it in there. I'm, I'm sure got you to. can. Yeah. I'm sure you can. Thank you for, thank you for sharing such a precious moment. And um, if people want to, I want to um, listen to that and read that again. Is that something that's on your website? Did you say? 
I've got the poem on there, but I'm going, I'm going to perform it. And That's put it what on. I think. Yes. Yes, I'm going to do that. I'm going to perform it. Yes. Because I do perform her poems as well. I do that at parties or weddings or do stuff. Like that. Yeah, I do. My goodness. I've had six of her poems. I just, I just totally love, I'm so inspired by her. She reminds me of my mother. There's something about her that's so like my mother. You're possessed when you see her. You know, she just had this magic about her. Wonderful. Yes. Yeah, there is this old traditional wisdom about yeah. her. Yeah. And the title of um, her book, I Know Why the Caged Bird Sings. I Know Why the Caged Bird Sings. Yeah, I performed that poem as well. I saw her perform that. I've learned Did that you? one. Yeah, and perform that as well. I love it. Love it. I love it for so many yeah. things in life that I always think of that title. It's incredible. You know, I love yeah. how she said you've got to look through a complexion, mm. see community. Yes. Yeah. I, she's just oh, awesome. Yeah, brilliant. Wow. You're incredible, really. <laughs> and it's been an honour and really it's been such a pleasure, Patty, to have you here today. Oh, it's been an absolute privilege for me. My very first podcast with you. Oh, <laughs> I'm, I'm honoured, I have to say. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank oh, you thank you. Much. And do come again and we're going to go shopping to that I magical will. land. We will. We will. And yeah. I'll be doing you my hibiscus drink as well. And you've got a book coming. Well. Yes, but you it has to be in that glass teapot. <laughs> so go, have I you got I know, the, I know where to find one. I've seen one. I'm in Common Garden. When you've got it, it, then I'm coming. <laughs> yes, definitely. Oh. Oh, Wonderful. thank you, Patty. I wish thank you. Thank you, Mimi. Beautiful times and beautiful moments in life. You're an absolutely delight, really. Thank you. Thank you. You're beautiful. <laughs> wonderful. To talk to. Absolutely you wonderful. too. And we'll speak soon. We will. Thank right. you. Take care. Take care. Bye. Bye. Thanks for having Bye. me. Bye. 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 Patty Slowly. Oh, what a fun lady, really. And I want to thank you all for joining me and giving me this opportunity to be with such wonderful guests and to be with you. Until next time, make some time for beauty and wonder. Take care and lots of love. Thank you for listening to Secrets for an Inspirational Life. Brought to you by your host, Mimi Novik. Please remember to subscribe to the podcast and see you in the next episode. For more information about Mimi Novik and her books, music and inspirational work, take a look at her website, www.miminovik.co.uk.